What is up, everybody? I know it's been a while since I've made a build video, but I figured I'd want to um, update you guys with what I think is going to be a patch-proof build, and that's going to be really good for both PvE and PvP content, where you only need to change around a couple of things. I'm going to be going over those, those things that you need to change to do either one. Um, but this LMG build is very, very good, and might be something that I run through the raids, but overall, I think this is your safest bet to set up so that it's not going to get ruined in the patch. Um, so if you got gear now and you want to prep, check this out. Maybe put it together. And it hits really hard. I just hit 207,000. This is a non-crit to an elite. 207,000 damage. And I will demonstrate it. Um, after I go over all the stuff, we'll... We'll, we'll damage it again, and it's no joke. 207,000 headshot. That is pretty crazy. So first off, the base of this is a black market M60. You don't need to use an M60. You could use an M249. For a while, the M249 that I had had more damage than my M60. Uh, but this one here, I'm running, um, by the way, I'm not running Demolitionist. I run Sharpshooter as my specialization. And I just think it's better. I've tried running both, and I just can't play without it. Uh, when you run unhinged, um, which is the talent that's on this gun, it kills your handling, which makes your accuracy and your stability really bad. And you really notice the stability loss if you're not running sharpshooter. Highly recommend it. You get a ton of stability, you get a ton of headshot damage, and really good reload speed. Uh, people ask me all the time why I'm not running... Uh, the LMG damage de uh, demolitionist, and that is why. Every time I try, I just hate the way it feels. So, um, talent here is unhinged. Uh, in the patch, this is going to be 20% weapon damage instead of 25. It's only going to lose 5%. And you're going to lose 25% weapon handling instead of 35. And that's not too bad. So, the stability and accuracy is going to be a little bit better come patch. Uh, mine, mine has Jazz Hands, which isn't a horrible talent. It's not what I would necessarily want. Some Weapon Handling would be good there. Extended Mag would be good there. Allegro would be good there. It's not as important as Unhinged itself. But um, this one just has some serious damage. When I, when I run this on Demolitionist, it's got like 37,000 or 36,000 base damage. Something crazy. And I don't have any... Um, generic weapon damage mods in this build right now, if you guys are wondering. Um, the way I have this modded is the C79 scope. This is a zoom scope that doesn't force you to zoom, and it has damage to elites on it. Uh, I use accuracy on my suppressor, and I use accuracy on my underbarrel, as well as the 20% reload speed um, magazine. When you have the 20% reload speed magazine, and you're using sharpshooter, the reload time is only 3.6 seconds. That's not very bad at all. So um, reload, reload speed is not as crazy as people think it is. As you can see here, it doesn't seem to take that long. I prefer, some people like filler up, but honestly, it, filler up is about the same amount of time. Like, sure, you could run the uh, demolitionist, but if you have to... Switch to your double barrel, shoot it twice, reload, then switch back. That's probably more than 3.6 seconds. I'm not exactly sure. Plus, filler up is getting ninja nerfed in the patch. It's no longer going to um, have infinite ammo. It's going to actually take from your reserves. Now, you guys might not have a nemesis. This is the second gun I use. And the reason I use it alongside that scope that I showed you, the C79, is its bottom talent right here, Preparation. While holstered, you gain 25% headshot damage when scoped with your current weapon. You don't actually have to be scoped at all. Um, you just need to have a scope that has um, a zoom on it. And from what I tested on the PTS, it still works. Patch hasn't came out yet, so we'll see if they nerfed that or not. Or not nerfed, but fixed it. It's kind of, I guess, an exploit where you can use um, any scope that has zoom. Like, if you want, you can put the 45% headshot damage scope, and people do that in PvP and then hip fire with it, and you end up getting 70% headshot damage using this scope with the Nemesis. Um, so that might be an option in PvP if you guys like to hip fire your LMGs. You throw this digital scope on, 
and just uh, you know run around in circles like Benny Hill music with no head on your chicken corpse and just have fun. But that's not the way I usually like to play. Um, but yeah, Nemesis, if you don't have it, uh, Chatterbox isn't that great with the shotguns. They did fix the reload cancel animation with Chatterbox in the patch, so that won't really be um, very beneficial. But Sweet Dreams, if you don't have a Nemesis, I think your best bet would be a Sweet Dreams shotgun. And what that does is when you do a combat roll, you get 25 bullets back into your magazine. And that can be really useful both in PvP and PvE, where if you just, you know, need to get a quick couple more shots off, you can do a combat roll and you have 25 more. Really useful. Nemesis isn't required, but it is definitely the best for damage output. Um, what I've done here is pretty much spec primarily into damage, not as much survivability in this build. Um, with patience up on your knee pads, you don't really need all that much. Patience is healing you. It's now getting nerfed to be five seconds um, of being in cover. You get 5% armor, and it's actually going to require six or more blues. So the requirement went down a little bit, but it's going to take five seconds of being in cover instead of three. But this is really useful. Um, I find it very noticeable if I don't run patience. Um, so that's what I have on the knee pads. I use Fenris knee pads so I can get um, damage to elites on it and an armor roll. So this armor roll is going to be pretty much doubled come patch. All of our blue attributes, health and armor, is going to be doubled. So it's not going to be uncommon to see 20,000 armor on knee pads now. Uh, let's go. Let's see what's next here. Let's go gloves. I'm not running compensated gloves because I have more than three, and I don't like to be pigeonholed into running compensated. Uh, I unfortunately don't have a mod slot to put a fifth red, but I found this to actually be better off than my, my options with compensated. You might be better off running a compensated pair of gloves with um, three reds, but the main reason I'm not doing it is because I don't have a pair. For me, they have to be Gila gloves, because I need the blue, the red for LMG damage, the compensated, and the yellow mod slot to unlock on the ropes. But uh, I just don't have it. So my next best bet was devastating on the gloves. You could do damage to elites on the gloves or headshot damage on the gloves. Um, but I went with de devastating because, you know, um, robots don't have a headshot multiplier. And a lot of my time is spent shooting those damn robots. Uh, backpack. On the ropes is the talent that I use. 25% damage when skills are on cooldown, which is really, really nice. Um, there's not really anything else out there that's so easy to get damage. You just need to have seven yellows. That's the hard part. And it's kind of annoying having to juggle seven yellows into builds, but I think it's worth it. I still haven't found a build that I like better than running on the ropes on pretty much every build now. And instead of going hardened, I go with hard hitting for damage to elites. If you want survivability, I recommend hardened on your backpack. This here has weapon damage, armor, skill power, and a utility mod slot. So I'm getting two yellows here that I needed for the seven. It's not the greatest backpack, but it's pretty solid. Um, come patch, this hasn't been rolled at all. So I'll be able to roll this weapon damage to very high amounts or this armor to 40 to 50,000 armor. Yes, no joke, 40 to 50,000 armor you can put on this backpack now. So that's pretty awesome. Um, mask, I run Heligard. I think Heligard is um, best in slot for gloves and masks. The only other mask that's comparable would be Sokolov. Uh, and that is because you get a blue attribute, a red attribute, a talent, and a yellow mod. Um, Sokolov is similar, but it's three attributes with no mods. So the attributes aren't gonna be as high of numbers. It's not gonna be as big of a role. So I really like Heligard. This one's got um, the talent for hard hitting damage to elites. It's got the red for damage to elites and the health roll, which come patch, I could roll, I think around 20,000 health on this mask before it caps out. And that's pretty awesome. Uh, there's also new rolls. I think I saw health percent. Um, you can get health percent on your masks now. So keep that in mind when you're saving things to recalibrate. This is a pretty solid mask. I really like Gila Guard. I think it's best in slot for the mask and the gloves because of how many uh, attributes and mods you get. 
Now, we're going to skip chests. We're going to go to holster now. I use my holster for my one piece of Petrov for 10% LMG damage. Uh, this holster is nothing special, but it does have two yellows and a blue. And this blue, uh, come patch, will be able to be recalibrated to around 40,000 health. Uh, if you have a, like say an Araldi's, um holster that has around 17 to 20,000, these are going to be doubled up. This is going to be over 40,000 health if what's on the PTS goes through. And it looks like they're sticking with it. So this is going to be over 40,000 health, and I can roll that onto this holster. So that's going to be pretty cool. Uh, it, it doesn't look like a very good holster, but it's decent. I mean, it's got some skill power. It's going to have tons of health, and I just needed it for those two yellows and the LMG damage. If you're struggling for getting yellows, another good option is ongoing directive. It's the only one that rolls four colors. This one here is, you know, three yellows, one blue, and you can even get four yellow ongoing directive holsters. I don't have it in my inventory, but they are out there. You can get four yellows. Um, and that can be useful. But I think one blue is best there so you can get the huge health roll. And then last but not least is the chest piece. Preferably, I would have like a Fenris chest, especially coming patch where you can re recalibrate them to have such huge attributes. But I don't have any that can um, unlock on the ropes. That's my biggest problem. Um, and I, I can juggle it around, maybe change my holster or whatnot. But right now... This one here, I only need one yellow, so I guess I could I could pull it off with the Fenris, but I'm running this because it has huge weapon damage. Um, I'm planning on rolling this. I can't, actually, because I've rolled Unstoppable Force. Preferably, if I hadn't ever done that, I would have been able to roll this health to massive amounts of armor come patch, but I just noticed I won't be able to do that, so this is stuck like this and will actually probably turn into a uh, piece of food for something like a Fenris chest or something that I want to put 15% weapon damage on. Because uh, this is a huge roll. I've heard it can go higher, but this one's pretty nice. Unfortunately, it's health, not armor. Um, but it works. I've got a couple other choices I can use for my chest piece. But this one just gives me the most damage. Unstoppable Force is the obvious talent here. Killing an enemy grants 2% weapon damage for every 10,000 max armor. It's getting changed in the patch. It is now 2% um, weapon damage for every 25,000 max armor, which is considerably less damage. But our armor numbers are, you know, going to be doubling. It's pretty easy to get twice as much armor that we have right now. Um, but you do need to spec for it and focus more on armor if you want to maintain high damage output with Unstoppable Force. If you just had Unstoppable Force on your build and it was, you know, adding you like 30 to 40% weapon damage and you never specced into armor, you're going to find that you might want to actually start specking into armor to get that damage bonus um, much more noticeable come patch time. But yeah, pretty much, um, don't look at these skills. This isn't what I normally, actually this is. Normally I use Chem Launcher, Heal, and um, if I'm PvPing, I will use uh, the Defender Drone or EMP. EMP Pulse is just really easy to keep your on the ropes up. And you drop a you drop a heal, you pop your EMP or whatever skill, and then your on the ropes goes up. Some people say, oh, use Spotter on your mask and use a regular Pulse. The downside about that is on the ropes doesn't go up until your uh, Spotter is gone. And I would just rather use um, Damage to Elites on my mask personally. Um... What else? So, if you want to PvP, here is an option. Rather than having so much damage to elites, uh, I switch it up to two, True Patriot knee pads and a True Patriot's mask. Um, the problem with them is that they are crit chance. So, you're going to be not able to use compensated gloves if you have a compensated glove build. And as you can see with my current build right here, I'm actually missing a yellow which I believe has to do with maybe a holster that I was running. Oh, no, it's my chest piece. I have another chest that I throw on for PvP right here. This Alps has 13.5 weapon damage with a yellow. I'm a little bit squishier here. I can move around the holster. I've also got a different backpack. Let's see here. Heligard backpack. I can run this um, on the ropes. Wait, that's not the right one. Where's my other backpack? 
which I think it's this Wyvern backpack. It doesn't have the weapon damage, but it has hardened instead of uh, damage to elites, because damage to elites doesn't really help you at all in PvP. So I could switch to this build here. Now I'm a 487. I did lose a tiny bit of weapon damage, 5.5%, but it's not that bad. And um, now with the two piece true patriots, you've gained 10% damage to armor. And this is really good because we don't have any damage to armor anywhere. So this is like a flat out multiplicative damage for the first amounts. Everything's pretty much additive to itself, but multiplicative with the base weapon damage of the gun. So when you first add your first 10% weapon damage, it's huge. When you add your first 10% armor damage, it's huge. Your first 10% damage to elites, it's huge. So that's why this is like um, a really sought after stat um, because this 10% damage to armor just adds so much. So highly recommend it if you're trying to PvP. I prefer to not use this build in PvP. I don't really like the play style. So I stick with it for a PvE um, type build. However, if I'm getting door camped um, in the dark zone, like in the ODZ, it's kind of nice to, to come out and um, just start hip firing, you know, with your... Um, with your, uh, your LMG to the door campers, and usually you end up dropping them. Where are my knee pads? There they are. So, let me show you that damage output so you don't think I'm lying here. There is a way to actually proc on kill damage numbers in the shooting range. Check this out. This is what you got to do. Um, let's reset this. Come on, where are you at? Uh, hello? I don't like it back there. I want to try to get a closer one. Nope, come closer. I guess this can work. So, we are going to damage this up to almost kill it. I don't want to hit it in the head. Okay, there we go. Now, what you need to do here is kill that target with um, a status effect, like burn or bleed. So I actually have a chem launcher on right now that um, is the fire starter chem launcher. And let's see if we can get this to work first try here. Um, we might be able to. So here we go. And there's my unstoppable force. And there's my 206 damage. That's huge, 206,000 damage to an elite with unstoppable force and on the ropes up. Um, this thing just melts. It absolutely destroys elites. It's got a hundred round magazine. I love this build. I don't know what my full DPS is. I don't really like doing DPS um, counts in the, in the shooting range. It's really inaccurate. And I could just call it a three million DPS build and um, put that in the title and you guys might believe it. I'm not sure. But I don't know what the real DPS is. I don't like to do the test because it's really misleading. That little red dot in the center of the target, that is actually a headshot multiplier. And that just throws all the DPS tests out the window. Because sometimes you hit a bunch of those random headshots in the center mass of a body. So I just, I like to avoid doing the shady ass DPS testings. But man, 200, 200 plus thousand damage to an elite's head is pretty damn good. And if you want to zoom in with this scope, the reticle's not that bad. I actually really enjoy this reticle, and I find myself sometimes using it. It's not a bad reticle at all. You don't need to use it, though, to get the headshot damage multiplier. And if they do change it in the patch so that you do need to use it, I still think it'll be worth using Nemesis. And then when you want that extra damage, using this scope. You could also use the 8x scope. That gives you, like, 30% headshot damage or... or I think 30% headshot damage, and it's not so bad com compared to, uh, yeah, 30%. It's not a bad choice either. Um, it's a little bit more tunnel vision feeling, and I don't really like the reticle, but uh, it's cool. But um, I think I covered everything. If I didn't, let me know. Here's my stats. Let me um, just change the scope so it doesn't mislead you guys. I know sometimes people are like, show the stat screen. 
Um, oh, if you're wondering how to get the C-79 scope, it's actually a secret mission. Um, here, I'll show you where it's at, because I know someone will probably ask. Fast travel to the archives, safe house. Um, run north. This building, directly north of it, find a way in there. I don't remember the way in, but there is a, a dude in there that you can talk to. He will give you a side mission that's like down here, south of the safe house. Do the side mission. You'll get the C-79 blueprint. Um, and it's a pretty sweet scope. But here, here are my stats. Um, we've got base weapon damage, 32,422. 90% headshot damage. Keep in mind that goes up when you, um, you know, I guess just all the time. There's 25% more because of Nemesis there. Uh, then we've got a 3.5 second reload time, which is pretty damn good. 49% um, all weapon damage, 15% LMG damage. So that's pretty damn good. And then 83% uh, damage to elites with this current setup here. My health and armor isn't the highest, but honestly, I don't feel like I ever need it to be much higher. And um, I'm overall really happy with this build. Let me know what you guys think. Sorry for the long video and sorry for the long uh, time it's been since I've made my last um, build video. I'm sure there's going to be a lot more coming, so don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Check me out live, twitch.tv slash Inigo Montoya. I'm really excited for the patch next week and hopefully the raid very soon after. Take it easy, guys.